So we are working on solving linear inequalities. We just finished up the introduction to compound inequalities, and this is an extension of that. So these are the two examples that we saw last time, two separate inequalities written with the word and and or in the middle. And that is a perfectly legitimate way to see compound inequalities. In fact, with or statements, we absolutely have to write it like this. This is the only way you will ever see an or statement. A lot of times we will see an and statement not written like this. If they can write it in a different fashion, then they will typically do so. So to see that an example of that, it will be conjoined with actually two inequalities like this into one statement. 5 is less than 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 11. So if it's ever written like this, then it is most definitely an and statement. And you are looking for the overlap involved. There's two separate ways that you can solve this and statement, and I will show you both ways. Let's start with the first way, which mimics what we did in the last video. We figured it as two separate inequalities, and we solved those inequalities separately. So let me write this as two separate inequalities. 5 is less than 2x plus 7, and remember this is always an and statement, 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 11. So I can solve each of these separately. I suggest that you pause the video from here, finish solving it, and putting your answer in all three notations over here on the right. So on the left, my first step is to subtract 7 gives me a negative 2 is less than 2x. Divide by 2 gives me negative 1 is less than x. Or the better way to write this is x is greater than negative 1. And don't ever lose the wording in the middle. On the right, same steps. Subtract 7. 2x is less than or equal to 4. Divide by 2 gives me x is less than or equal to 2. Now my graph here, I put negative 1 on the left and a positive 2 on the right. Let me shade these in different colors just like I did last time. X is greater than negative 1 with a parenthesis in blue. And X is less than 2 with a bracket in green. Remember, when I'm doing an AND statement, I'm looking for the overlap. So the places where my shading overlaps is between negative 1 and 2, where it's a parenthesis on the left and a bracket on the right. So my interval notation is exactly that, negative 1 and 2, parenthesis on the left and bracket on the right. Now my set builder notation, of course, it starts the same way as always. But this is going to be a little bit more complicated to see. I'm not going to put this here. I should never be using the words and in a set builder notation because we should always be able to condense it by the way our finished graph looks up here. So notice my shading is in between. So the way I can write this is with my x in between. Now, if I ever have an x in between, my inequalities around it will always be pointing to the left. They'll always be less than. Since this one here has an or equal to bar, this one here has to have an or equal to bar. Now, I have negative 1 is less than x, and I have 2 is greater than x. So this is the condensed version of this inequality here. And the way I typically read it is x is between negative 1 and 2. So that's what I fill in with my set builder notation. x is between negative 1 and 2. Now this is the first way that we can solve this problem here. 
Let me do this exact same problem again by using the second way. And the second way is definitely my personal preference. It's a much shorter way, and to come up with your notations over here, it should be a lot easier. We're going to leave it in this format here, and what our goal is is to still isolate the x, but we want to actually isolate it in the middle of the inequality symbol. So to cancel everything else out from the middle, I subtract 7 from all sides. And that's the trick that goes with it. I must do it from all three pieces to isolate my variable in the middle. That gives me a negative 2 is less than 2x is less than or equal to 4. And then, to get rid of my 2 in the middle, I divide by it. But again, I have to do it in all three pieces. So on the left, I have negative 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. And notice this is the exact same solution that we got the other way, but we don't have to do any manipulation to get to that point. That is just our final answer. So our graph from there is shading in between negative 1 and 2. Negative 1 has a parenthesis, 2 has a bracket, and we shade in the middle. Interval notation, of course, is the same thing. And set builder notation, we just write down what we have. Now I have one more example of a compound inequality in this fashion. It's a little bit more complicated because there's a fraction involved. But I suggest just using that magic trick that we've seen multiple times before and going from there. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can get the answer to this problem. Now you can do this problem one of two ways, just like we did in the last example. We can split it up with two separate inequalities with the and statement, or we can leave it as is and solve it as this way. If we do it like that, then we have to remember our goal, which is to isolate the x or whatever variable it is in the middle of the inequality. So we need to do opposite operations to cancel everything else except for the x in the middle of this inequality. Now, when I see the middle here, I see a fraction, and I can actually do that a couple of ways as well. Since I only have one denominator, I can write this as two separate fractions and go about it that way. Or, as I suggested before, I'm going to use that magic trick. So the first thing that I want to do is get rid of my fractions throughout this problem. So I need to do that by multiplying by the LCD. Well, I only have one fraction here, so my LCD is the only denominator that I see. So if I multiply things by negative 2, it will cancel out the negative 2 in this denominator. So if I do it in the middle, then I have to do it in all of the other pieces as well. So on the left, negative 2 times negative 4 gives me positive 8. On the right, 4 times negative 2 gives me a negative 8. In the middle, my denominator cancels, so I'm left with the numerator of 5x minus 2. And now I need to put in the inequality signs. Notice, since I did multiply by a negative number, that means I do need to flip these inequality signs. So they will become greater than rather than less than like we started with this problem. Okay, keeping with my goal to isolate x in the middle, I get rid of this 2 by adding 2 on all three places of my inequality. That gives me positive 10 is greater than 5x my 2's cancel out, is greater than negative 6. To get rid of the 5, I divide again all pieces by 5, and that leaves me with positive 2 is greater than x is greater than negative 6 fifths. Now I do have my x isolated in the middle, but this is not in the correct format. We want to have our smallest numbers on the left, 
and our largest numbers on the right. And just like I said before, these guys should always be less than. They should always be pointing to the left. So I need to rearrange this whole statement here. It goes back to thinking like I'm holding it up next to a mirror. So I have negative 6 fifths is less than x is less than 2. So here is my final solution to this problem. So the notations that go with it, first my graph, negative 6 fifths on the left, positive 2 on the right, should replicate what I have over here in my solution. My x is in between, so I shade in between. Neither one of them are or equal to, so both of these are parentheses. So there's my graph. My interval notation mimics the graph. Parentheses, negative 6 fifths, up to 2 with parentheses. And my set builder notation is the braces such that where I just fill in my blank with this inequality that I have here on the left. Negative 6 fifths is less than x is less than 2. So I've just finished a couple of examples of an alternative way to write compound and inequalities. Remember, if it's ever written in this fashion, it's an and statement. You can solve it separately, but I suggest you go about doing it this way, where you isolate your x in the middle of your inequality. And so this finishes up the whole set of videos of solving all linear inequalities. Compound like we've seen in the last two videos and just basic inequalities like we saw before.